Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. I know people from YouTube and Facebook cannot hear my music for tonight, but uh, let's give Molly and her slow down. Um, welcome, Dr. Kenny. Hey, man, good to see you. Helen made it. Hey, hey, how are you? So, all right, so listen. I, um, I, um, I was going to do this tonight. I, I got a good one for y'all tonight. I'm on a Friday evening. I'm going to just take my time. Y'all, Some of y'all don't have to go to work in the morning. And, um, you know, we ain't going to stay up all night long. Hey, we got a new listener. Hey, Jackie, how are you? Glad you could join the doctor, a.k.a. Coach Ken, a.k.a. the professor tonight. And we're going to have fun like we always do about this time. But before we get into the fun, I need y'all on TikTok to give me some likes. Give me some likes because if you give me likes, they will invite more people. Um, y'all give me some hearts on uh, Instagram. I got YouTube. I don't know what you can do on YouTube, but just, just join in. All right. So, hey there, Chili's. Is that Chili's? Um, here's what I'm gonna say. First off, before we get started, I'd love to know your name and where you're checking in from because I have to properly welcome you because you could be anywhere. You could be doing anything, but you are here with me tonight and I do appreciate it. So your name and where you are checking in from. Jennifer from Canada. What part of Canada? All right, all right, Canada in the building. We got Dr. Kenny Brewer, Memphis, Tennessee. Katerina, Chicago in the building. Ayana, Seattle in the building. We've got Jennifer, Ontario. Helen Bills from Fort Worth, Texas. Wendy from Florida. Benita from Columbus, Ohio. Constance from Chicago. D from New York City. Ashley from Atlanta. A in the building, Tara from Chicago, Keisha from Florida. We got Long Beach, Joanne from Long Beach, Sylvia from Little Rock, Arkansas. Erica from Arkansas. Sunshine from California, A in the building. Shay from Louisiana in the building. Nisa from New Jersey, the DMV area. We got, uh, uh, what was that, Angel and... Um, uh, Angel, oh, Angel Rice Cakes, Angel Rice Cakes from the DMV. Hey, Angel, Jessica from Detroit, Shay from Louisiana, Shanika from South Carolina, um, Natasha from Chicago, Crystal from Albuquerque, New Mexico in the building tonight. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much. I am Coach Ken, um, and I welcome tonight. Some of you are new. Some of you have been here. Now, if I give y'all something good tonight on YouTube, 
y'all send me a super chat. I, I told my wife, don't nobody ever send me no super chat. I said, I guess I must not be doing that. She kind of kind of snickered at me like, I guess they don't love what you're doing. But I was like, I'm going to get me some super chats tonight. Now, also, all right, so tonight, let's, let's talk about what we got going on. So I was going to do this whole thing on the ways men manip manipulate women. However, I began thinking about it. Um, women do a lot of manipulation too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of combine it. Um, I'm going to kind of combine it the way people manipulate. Some of them are going to be strictly for men. Some of them be strictly for women. But I'm going to give y'all the manipulation tactics that people use so that you won't become a victim. And listen, at the end of this, I am going to give... Uh, I still got my special going on for my discovery sessions for the month of March. Um, if you stay to the end, I will tell you how you can get a discovery session with me. Uh, I've been booked up for weeks now. Um, but if you feel like you just want to know, you need to know what's going on in your life. You need to make a change. Then we're going to do that. But we'll talk about that at the end. All right. That being said, so we're going to talk about manipulation techniques. And, and, and y'all know how to coach, do so I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time, and I'm going to explain some things to you. But I, I not only tell you what's going on, y'all know, I tell you why it's going on. The truth is, y'all, I'm smart. I'm really smart. And, I, 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 and listen, some people might think that's arrogant. I don't care what you think. I am smart. I have to be smart to help the people that I help. Um, so I'm super good at this. Matter of fact, damn it, I'm great at this. And so when I tell y'all something, all of the people who've been in my classes know when I tell y'all something, if you do it, it works. It works. All right. It, it just does. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to give you not only what people do, but I'm going to tell you why they do it. Is that fair enough? Are we all right? And if you got some questions, you can ask the questions, and I'll try to catch the questions because I ain't going to rush tonight, but uh, I am going to do what it is I do. All right. Common manipulation techniques and tactics and strategies that people use while dating or in a relationship. But before I get into the tactics, let me tell you why they do it. Why do people manipulate? People manipulate other people. First of all, manipulation in and of itself is a psychological form of getting people to do things that you want them to do um, with nefarious intentions. Okay? Now, that ain't Webster's. That's just mine. Now, in other words, I'm trying to get you to do something that I want you to do. OK, but my intentions are nefarious. Now, in the dating or relationship realm, people manipulate, try to get you to do stuff because they have nefarious intents. Now, what does that mean? They want to get something from you that they might not be able to get otherwise if I were to just ask you for it. All right. So. My, I may be wanting to control you. I may be wanting to get sex from you. Maybe wanting to get money from you. Maybe to want to get you emotionally enthralled in me so that I can use you. Whatever it is, I'm going to tell you why the tactics, the techniques, and the strategies that people use to manipulate you. Now, some of you have used these strategies to manipulate others. <laughs> Some of you have used them. Now, I'm going to give you the strategy. Now, I'm not going to talk about whether they're right or wrong, good or bad. You make that determination. But what I am going to talk about, and I'm not going to use those words. I'm going to use the words, is it working for you or not? Because what works for some, what's good for some, it's, 
is bad for others, okay? What is right for some is, is not right for others. So what we're going to talk about is one. All right, let's get busy. The first one, the infamous, the infamous love bombing. The infamous love bombing. And people say, I got to start there because it is a term that people use a lot. Many times people don't know what it is or why it's used. So love bombing is a form of, I it's when people overwhelm you with positive statements, positive emotional statements. They overwhelm you with affection initially. So let me give you an example of love bombing. Love bombing is the person that you just meet. You've been knowing them about a week. They text you every morning. They give you that good morning text. Hey, love, how are you? They give you that good morning text and they tell you everything you're wanting to hear. Yeah, I want to be in a relationship I'm trying to find me right. You have all of the characteristics. And the way you know it's love bombing is because it is not proportionate to where the relationship is. I allow me to give you uh, allow me to give you um some reference. So you've been knowing the person a week and they're telling you all the things when we get married, when we have kids, when we buy a house, you know, they text you every 30 minutes. It, it's almost like it is they're throwing love grenades at you. Now, now, what is the reason behind love bombing? Well, the reason behind love bombing is love bombing gets you into an emotional state quicker than you would naturally, all right? Love bombing overwhelms you because what happens when you're love bombed and then you don't, and then you just accept it emotionally, there is a hormone release in you of oxytocin. You want to bond with this person who is telling you all of the things that you want to hear. Then there's the dopamine, the feel-good hormone, because every time you see the text come through, it's like that dose of feel-good medicine. It's like that hit of feel-good medicine, all right? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you get emotionally engaged. And then once you get emotionally engaged, you bypass the neocortex, the logical part of your brain. And when you bypass the logical part of your brain, now you are making decisions from the emotional part of your brain. Then, all right, I said, now, the question is this. Once you start making decisions from that part of your brain, you start doing things that are not congruent with what you normally would do, not congruent or aligned with your normal core values, right? You start doing stuff. He, the person starts getting you doing, he starts getting you to do stuff, all right? You know, hey, Loan me some money, you know, I'm hard, and he gives you a story and you believe it. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you didn't want to get physically involved right away, but because you think it's right, you think it's right because he's love bombing you. Um, and then all of a sudden, you having sex, and then you feel like, oh, I'm in love, right? But it is an illusion. It is not love. It is a rush of your hormones. And so, but love bombing is used by master manipulators as a tactic to fast pace you to a place where now you are doing what I want you to do. Do you know what happens when you get manipulated by love bombing? All of a sudden, he tells you things. Well, I don't, I don't want to get into my other techniques. But then... When you start doing it, you think you start feeling like this is it. You start future pacing. You start thinking about the relationship and what it'll look like in the future. And all of a sudden, then once he's got you there, what does he do? He start pulling back. You ever seen that? You ever been around that? And he don't call as much. Once he got you there, um, 
you, you don't call you as much. You call and you wonder what's going on. You notice that he's pulling back. You don't get your good morning text. He don't hit you. He said, I'll call you back, but I don't hear from you. <laughs> what you don't hear from him. And so all of a sudden, you begin, now let me tell you what happens. You begin wondering, what did I do? What happened? What did I do? And then you start questioning yourself. And when you begin questioning yourself, what happens? All of a sudden, you don't know what happened. And then you try to fight and get it back. So then you start doing more, calling more, doing more, because you feel like if I do more, I can get back to that place where I had the dopamine and the oxytocin rush. Or it's like hitting that day. Remember they used to say, for those of you my age, you know, or not as old as me, but you remember when the crack epidemic came out and they said that first hit of crack. Ooh, they said that first hit and everybody been chasing that first high. They chasing that big Mike, my guy. What's up, buddy? And they say you start chasing the first high and, 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 and they keep hitting it but they can't get back to the first high. That's what it's like. That's what love bombing does to you. Ooh -wee. And then you find yourself enthralled. You what we call, you catching feelings. You done caught feelings. And now what happens? And now you fighting uphill, fighting uphill to get back to that first crack hit. All right, and y'all, the man, and everybody that the, everybody that sends you a good morning text ain't a manipulator. I I just need you to say that. I need to say this, but I'm talking about there are some. This is just a strategy that some of them use. Okay, all right. So that's all I want to tell you. That's number one, the love bomb, and I wanted to explain it to you. So now, the second the second uh, manipulation tactic is what we call, they call it breadcrumbing, but I call it minimum wage in you. So when somebody, instead of breadcrumbing, let's change the name. I call it minimum wage in you. Now, when somebody minimum wage you, they've already love bombed you, and then they've gotten you emotionally invested in the relationship. And then they pull back. And this is a technique, y'all. Then they pull back, and then you start acting like what I said. You start wondering what happened, what happened, what happened. Well, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? And then you start doing more. Well, then they start minimum waging. What is minimum waging? They start giving you just enough to keep you on the hook. Whereas they was calling you four and five times a day, they might call you once or twice, right? And so they sprinkle the breadcrumbs or they do or minimum wage you or do just enough to keep you on the hook. But that just enough ain't enough for you because it's almost like you used to feed me three meals a day and now you only feed me one meal a day. And I don't understand it and I don't like it. And so what happens is I want the three meals a day. And again, I begin going overboard, trying to recapture it. But the more I move forward, the more the other person pulls back. The more I move forward, the other person moves back. Now, why do they do that? Get this. Just like they wanted to get you used to, accustomed to, conditioned to the love bombing, now they want to condition you to get, it is breadcrumbing, that's the name. I just created my own name called Minimum Waging You. I, I had Minimum Waging You long before breadcrumb, I have even heard of breadcrumbing, okay? <laughs> and then, but this ain't something that just men do. Women do this too now. It's just that men do it more prevalent, I believe. Ah, Tina says, damn, I do this to men. All right. And so, but a lot of times people do it when they start feeling smothered in the relationship, when they start feeling overwhelmed in the relationship.
when they start, when they have an avoided personality style, an avoided fearful style, attachment style, then they start doing it. It doesn't mean that people do it just, I'm, I'm just giving you an example of what it is. And then the other person starts so starts breadcrumbing or minimum waging you, and then they start pushing you away. Okay. And then you're wondering why, why, why? But instead of them communicating about what they're feeling, um, communicating about what they're feeling, they would rather do that and hope that you get the message to it. Now, some people want to get you used to. So, so what is the nefarious part of it? What is the devious part of it? Is, is the devious part of it? Is, um, they want you to get used to that. So instead of saying, communicating their feelings, what they want to do is if I pull back, you'll get used to, you'll get used to, this is the way we're going to interact moving forward. And so, and so what happens is, is you either begin to accept it, you begin to accept this is what I'm going to do, or you get upset, you try to do more, or you finally walk away. But either way, the other person does it because they want to condition you to a new way of being in the relationship. Anna says, this is true. God bless you. I've been chatting with a guy and he will always say that he is too busy. Anna, my job, my job is to make my people aware of what's going on out here. Okay. Um, and so I'm just saying the third, these, these manipulation tactics are in no particular order, but, but all right, but again, I'm going to give it to you for women and men. Women do it too, y'all. Women do stuff too. So I'm going to give you a little bit of both tonight. All right. So number three, oh, number three, women and men do this one. I call it the guilt trip manipulation tactic. The guilt trip um, manipulation. Here's how this works. So the guilt trip, men and women both do this one. If you decide you don't want to do something, if you say no, for instance, if I had a person the other day, I'm just, we, I hope it's grown folk on the line, who um, he wanted to have anal sex with her. All right. One of my students, I, I hear it all, y'all, because I have to coach people through it all. And she wasn't fit, we're comfortable with that. She didn't want to do that. So she had said, so I began telling her how to set boundaries, how to communicate boundaries, right? About that. But she said, what she said was, the guy said, but if you love me, if you love me, you'll let me have that part of you. If you love me, oh, if you feel like you, maybe I'm not the one for you. And so I explained to her, this was called the guilt trip manipulation tactic. So he wanted to guilt you into doing that with him. And so, and the way you know it's a guilt, we guilting you because it was not about, the conversation was not about why you were uncomfortable with it. The conversation was attempting to manipulate you into doing it using other examples, using other people, using other references. Um, and so it becomes, it becomes manipulation because the guilt, I'm using the guilt part, because y'all, you know, like I know, a lot of times when you feel guilty, you will do things that you wouldn't normally do if you didn't feel guilty, right? And so she felt guilty. And before she did it, I explained to her, no, 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 because if you know, you will not let somebody guilt you into it. And so I explained to her how to communicate her boundaries. And you know what happened when she communicated her boundaries? He was in the wind. Poof. And I said, you know what? I just saved you. 
I just saved you. Because once you give that part of yourself, you're going to feel devastated if he were to walk away. Okay. I'm just being honest because she was like, I had never done that before, but I really liked the guy. I really liked the guy. And so I just want to tell you, if anybody tries to guilt you into doing something, instead of talking about why it's important to them, instead of guilting you, um, then, then I understand because a person might want something. It's okay to talk about what you want. It's okay to share why you want it. But it is not okay to guilt me into doing it if I if it's my boundaries and I won't do it. Okay, and so that is enough. And if anybody is trying to guilt you into doing something, it is a form of manipulation. Uh, Miss Murray said he would lose all access to me immediately. That's a good thing. Then, all right. No, the next one. Oh, the next one, ah, the next technique. Women do this as well. Now, women do the guilt part too, y'all. Women do the guilt part too, because, oh, you won't pay, oh, you don't want to pay for my, my spectrum bill. Oh, you don't want to pay to take me to Ruth Chris. I can't go to Applebee's. Wow, my last guy did that. You don't care. I'm not worth it. Women guilt just as much as men, and it's a manipulation tactic. So if any guys are listening, that's a, that is a manipulation tactic. Oh, thank you. Two people say you caught me. You saw me on Carden, uh, Unfaithful Carden Act. Yes, yes, yes. That is my show with me and Tammy Roman out here roaming these streets looking for people. <laughs> All right. Number four. Number four, the fourth strategy for manipulation, I wrote them down, y'all, is the yes Factor. Write this down. The yes frat factor. And so I think somebody just gave me a gift. I I think so because I got a little hard on my head on TikTok. On TikTok, I think they gave me something. I ain't got no super chat on YouTube yet, but that's all right. Thank y'all for giving me something. I know I must be doing something. All right. The yes factor. Here's how the yes factor works. The yes factor works like this. If I can get you to, uh, somebody sent me a dog, and uh, a dog with a heart, I believe that's something. I believe I just got something. Yeah, 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 good job. All right, so let me tell you what that is. Um, the yes factor is, if I can get you to agree to a smaller request, for instance, if I can get you, can you, can you run by the store and pick up my clothes from the cleaners? It's not a large request. And you're like, oh, I'm on my way over there. I'm going to go by the cleaners and pick them up, right? Now, oh, can you stop by the store and get some ketchup? Now, I'm just using these as examples. But what if, what if, what's he doing? So it's called the law of inertia. They use it in sales trainings. If you can get someone to agree to a smaller request, because it is congruent with their value system, you can get them to agree to a larger request. And the larger request might be, next time, can I borrow your, your, your Netflix account? Okay? And so they're molding you. Somebody says they're molding you before the bigger request. This is a manipulation tactic. Men do it. Women do it. Both do it. And so what I'm saying to you is be aware of it because now somebody might ask you to do something small and they may not have any intent, but any, any ill intent. They may not, but you've got to be careful because it's a manipulation tactic that true manipulators use. They use it very effectively and they can disguise it. They can disguise it because you will think, oh, it's just a harmless request. Yes, it's a harmless request right now. <laughs> Uh, somebody says, I think I've cracked the code of why older women are not desired. We peak BS. Um, that's not true, Miss Murray. I mean, y'all do my, you might peak BS, but the truth is older women let good men go by faster too because you think it's BS. So there's a flip side to that coin as well. 
And I see that every day too. A good man, well, you would let him go because you think he's BS because he knows what he wants. And I don't want to get off on that. I, my, 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 my operations director is watching and he'll say to me, can you just stay on task? And I'm going to stay on task because I hate to get that damn email. All right. Number five. Number five is another manipulation tactic. It starts with somebody. Hey, Cheryl, send me a super chat. One, thank you, Cheryl. Oh, you too. Yes, Cheryl. Appreciate ya. <laughs> Got me my first super chat today. All right. So, but this one right here. Oh, oh, please listen to this. <laughs> Miss Murray's is still on task, bro. I got you, Miss Murray. I'm still on task. All right. Number five, I don't want dot, dot, dot. Watch this one. When a man says, and I'm, I'm men use this one. When the man says, I don't want no relationship right now. So you, you ask him, well, what are you looking for? Well, you know, I'm looking for a good woman, but I don't want a relationship. I don't want a serious relationship. I don't want a relationship right now. You know, right now, I don't want a relationship. Now, why is that a manipulation tactic? It could be. Not because they don't want a relationship right now, but because I don't want a relationship right now, but I want the benefits of the relationship right now without the responsibility of the relationship right now. <laughs> I want all the benefits, the sex, the whenever I want to see you, I want all the benefits of the relationship right now, but I don't want the accountability of the responsibility of the relationship right now. And so this is manipulation. Here's why. And I always tell my students, here's what you do. You say, if a person, if he says, I don't want a relationship right now, and you say, okay, that's great. I tell you what, if you don't want a relationship right now, I understand that. Because I want to I want to make sure I'm the one for you. But let's uh, let's not act like we're in one then. So we're not, I'm going to date other people and you date other people until we decide that we're the ones. And we won't we won't have a physical part of this because I don't want to get my mind all screwed up. I don't want to get emotionally enthralled because I introduced the physical part. Is that all right with you? All of a sudden, stuff changes. Because here's what happens to many people, y'all. Here's what, here's what happens to many people is you hope that the relationship becomes a committed relationship. And so what you do is you do everything you can to make it committed. You give them all of you emotionally, all of you physically, and you just thinking they're going to change their mind. They're going to change their mind. They're going to see the value in me. They're going to see my value and they're going to want to get in a committed relationship with me. Well, that's not how men fall into committed relationships. That's not how it works. So let me explain. Let me kick some game to y'all. So that you never say you don't know. Men don't think about committed relationships the way women do. So what I'm about to tell you is about to change some of y'all life. Now, listen. Men don't view committed relationships. They don't, men don't think about the picket fence. They don't get with you and think about, you know, how many kids y'all gonna have together. That ain't, or what y'all gonna be doing, going to the Maldives. They don't think about that. See, I always tell women, commitment slaps a man in the face. It blindsides him. Now, what I mean by that, a man commits to you because because of the way you make him feel. Now get this. See, men, this is why I tell women, stay in the present. Don't get in the future, think about the future. A man bases him wanting to be with you on how you make him feel when he is with you, okay? Now, so if a man is with you, y'all have fun together, he likes being with you, he wants to be with you more. He wants to be more with you because y'all, it is not based on, it is not based on anything else. That is why a man, a rich man can marry a, a woman who works at the grocery store, a cashier. Now a rich woman will not marry a poor guy working as a cashier. You know why? Because of the way we think. 
The woman thinks about future pacing. She thinks about their finances together. Yeah, because, you, you know, how are we going to build uh, together? Whereas a man, he ain't thinking about that. He ain't thinking about that. He thinking about how you're going to make him feel when he come home every day. He thinking about, uh, are you going to empower him? Are you going to nurture him? Are you going to make him feel good? Do we have to argue? He think there are two different thought processes. And so when you thinking about, when you begin thinking about how men think and how women think, you won't approach it the same way. All right. You know, yeah, that, not, that's not, not most men that I know. Somebody says, men definitely think about your money. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You, a man, now a man might get intimidated. Some men might get intimidated because you make more money than him. Because that, but that's an insecurity in him. But most men ain't thinking about, now, now most men who ain't thinking about the money you're making, like that's going to be the determination how I am, whether I'm going to be with you if you make me feel good when I'm with you. I'm sorry. That's not true. And I'm telling you, I don't I don't coach hundreds of men, hundreds, coaching some right now. Um, and we had this very conversation on a group of guys, four guys the other day. So don't get it twisted. Guys don't care about your accolades, how many degrees you got. And yeah, it's a bonus that you make money. That's a bonus, but that's not the thing. That's not the thing that's going to make the difference. That's not, y'all. You know, I'm I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. Just saying. All right. So I told you how to handle that manipulation strategy. I don't want. And what they will say, they men don't say, I don't want a relationship. They ain't going to say that. What they're going to say is, I don't want to, I don't want a serious relationship right now. No, he will always use the words right now, always right now, even the manipulator. Am I lying? Anybody in here has heard this phrase before, right now. Why? For now, I'm not. Why? Here's why. Because it makes you think, it makes you think that later on, there's a chance for a serious relationship. And so what you figure, if I give my all. If I give my all, if I keep giving him more, if I show him my value, he will see it. <laughs> and it's just a manipulation tactic. Not ever. And so, y'all, I'm you listen. All right, I'm just saying. So that is the reason why I told you how to handle it. And you say, yes, if we're not in a serious relationship right now, this is what we're gonna do. Let's act, let's don't act like it then. Let's not act like we're in a serious relationship right now. Let's get to know each other, see if we're in alignment with each other. Let's not introduce the physical into it. And if we come to that point, fine. Let's focus on the mental and emotional, or the mental and emotional connection and see if we jive together. And so then, because what did I say? The manipulator wants the benefits of the relationship without the responsibility of the relationship. Ooh wee coach coach you you on fire you on fire now that's the one that men use I, that's that's one of the ones that is mostly exclusive to men all right but i want to give you i want to give you um a, a a few more a few more maybe i do a couple more i got plenty of them written down here so, and this is one that women and men do. When they use words like, I'm going to call this strategy, us against the world. Us against the world. All right? Now, us against the world, meaning, why do you have to spend time with your friends? Okay? Yeah. Teresa said, nope, you're not lying. You're absolutely right. I always listen for the words right now. Uh, so now, so watch this, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch this. So us against the world, I call that this manipulation tactic right here. Us against the world, men and women both use this. And so what they are, what what they say is are things like this. You know what? Why you gotta hang out with your friends? 
Why you not? Why not hang out with me? Why you got to go to the cigar bar with your boys? Why you just can't be with me? All right, because and what they do is they attempt to men and women isolate you from your family and loved ones. Y'all, I've seen this. I've seen this happen before, and so they'll say things like they will use the guilt trip along with the us against the world. It's us. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's about us, ain't it? Why we got to bring somebody else into it? And what they're really trying to do is isolate you from everyone else. Isolate you from the things you know. Isolate you from the friends. Why, they, why do they want to isolate you? Because the more you isolate it, the more you can't tell them about the things that are going on in the relationship. The more you isolate a person, the more control you have over that person. Many narcissists do this. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a narcissist to use this strategy, but what I am saying is, is that many narcissists do use it, all right? Now, now this right here is an advanced technique. This is something that when you get to this, when you get to this part, be very careful, y'all. Very careful, whether it's a woman or a man. Either one, both of them use this technique, okay? Um, so I'm just simply saying that this is the thing that you got to do, you got to know, all right? This is, this is what I'm just saying. All right, now, and the last one I think I'm going to go, I might go two more. I think I'm going to give y'all two more. Y'all getting something out of this? Let me know if you're getting some out of this. Just say, I am. Say, I am. I'm getting some out of this, coach. All right, I am. All right, I'm, I'm getting something. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, all right, all right. All right, I am, I am, I am. I see the I am. All right, now, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Now, this is what I am. All right, good, thank you. Now, so I'm going to give you this one right here. I'm gonna give you this one. I call at this 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 manipulation strategy. I call the anger flip mode strategy. Anger flip mode strategy. So here's how it works. Now this one you use a little gaslighting, and it works a different way. So you see that there is a text message from a girl, a lady on his phone, right? And he and he pulls his phone down and you see it. And then he says, and then, and then you, and he tells you, I didn't, you ain't seen no lady, lady, you ain't seen, so you, like, he tried to make you think you crazy. Now, this is the gaslighting part. Yeah, okay, so let me, let me, I'm gonna make this, this is kind of like three in one. So gaslighting, let me, let me just talk about gaslighting. Gaslighting is a manipulation strategy when the when another person tries to make you question your own reality. They make you feel like you're crazy. All right. So the person. So let's talk about gaslighting. We'll, we'll go back to the anger flip mode. Let's talk about gaslighting. You saw the picture on their phone, and they say you ain't see no picture. You just tripping your insecurity again. But you saw the picture, but the person makes you believe that you are crazy, that you're nuts. And you say, no, and then you start to question it. And then they keep saying it, see your insecurity, that's why I can't be with you. You see your, now gaslight, no, no, not gaslighting, gas, G-A-S, gaslighting. And gaslighting, um, Gaslighting is the one where the person makes you, attempts to make you question your own reality, okay? Now, the person told you that you could spend the money, but then they say, I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you to spend the money, but you said, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You, I know you did. No. And why would I tell you that? Why would I tell you to spend the money? And they make you start to question your own reality. Why would you say that? 
why would why would you look you know why would you think that and all of a sudden you begin thinking did i say it and so when a person gaslights you what they do is they make you they will say things as though you crazy as though you stupid as though you like really really, really you saying this and then all of a sudden they will be so convincing about it that you'll be like damn did they say it and once you begin questioning yourself they got you they can use that to manipulate you they can Hey, how you doing, Miss Angie? How are you? Good to see you, Miss Free. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, but yeah, that is manipulative, y'all. And I'm telling you, that one is big. Well, we're not talking about narcissists, no. What I'm talking about is manipulation tactics that people use. Narcissists use some of these tactics, but other people who are not narcissists use them. And it's not just men. Some, some women use some of these too. Now I've given some that just men do primarily. All right, but that's what we're talking about. Manipulative strategies that people use. And so the last one I want to talk about is what I call the anger flip mode. The anger flip mode. Now the anger flip mode works like this. You went through my phone. Now, I done seen the text messages on the phone where you and the chick been talking, my dude. I see them. But then, but then, what the, I saw a woman do this on TikTok. She got mad at the guy. She got mad at the guy. Why are you going through my phone? So he tried to flip, she tried to flip mold it on him. He was, she was cheating with a dude and she was talking to the dude and it was terrible because she talked to the dude how the dude had beat it up and he, she was sore and she couldn't wait to see him again and he read all this and she tried to flip it to myself. Why would you go through my phone and tried to get mad at him? So that's why I call it the anger flip mode. So they get act like they mad so they can flip it on you and turn it around and make you feel like you at fault. So the way this works is they take the situation that they're focusing on and then they begin to focus on some, something else, right? They take the focus off on all the text messages that you were sending to the other lady, but then they put the, the focus on you going through the phone, invading the privacy. <laughs> Y'all, all these tactics, <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, there are more of them, y'all, but I think I'm going to stop right there. And so these ain't just guys. Women do it too. Y'all, women do a lot of these strategies. Don't, don't, don't just, I'm telling you about guys because most of y'all are women on my platform. But I tell guys about women and the stuff that they use, how they use men with finances and stuff. But I ain't going into that tonight. Um, but I'm just saying, yo, that that that's gonna be I hope y'all got something out of this. Now, let me just say this. I'm gonna leave y'all with this. Um now uh, so I've been doing this month, y'all. I've been doing discovery calls. Discovery session is my 60 to 90 minute deep dive and connecting the dots of why you're getting the results you're getting. Connecting the dots of um, if you want to get a new, if you're in a relationship, why it ain't working? If, you, if, if, if you're trying to restore, what is going on with you? Why do you keep attracting the same people? Why, why, what, whatever. And you don't know. Some of you need to book a session. This month, my sessions are normally $350. I went up on my price, but this month I'm doing them for half price, $50, $175. I'm only doing, last month they were 150. Y'all notice I'm creeping back up to my regular price. But I told my team that I want to help more people. I've been booked up for the last six weeks. But for anybody out there who says, you know what, coach? I got to know what's going on with me. I'm tired of getting the same result. I want to do something different this year. I want to get in a new relationship. I want to be a better version of myself. I want to communicate better. I just want to be better. If that's you, what I want you to do, 
Don't go to my website and book it because it's $350 on the website. Here's how you do. What you do is email me at coachkencanyon at gmail.com. And you tell me that you want to take advantage of the special, the uh, March, my birthday month, March special, uh, that you want to take advantage of it. Coach Ken Canyon at gmail.com. Um, and tell me you want to take advantage of it. And I'll tell you how to pay for it. Once you pay for it, it I don't, it's simple. Once you pay, either Zelle, PayPal, Cash App, or credit card. Once you pay, my birthday is March 15th. Thank you, Miss Free. Thank you, Miss Angie. Um, but then once you pay, I'll, I'll give you a link um, and we'll set up a Zoom time um, that's convenient for you and me. And we'll make it work. We'll make it work. All right, y'all. That is my time. But for those of you Pisces season, you know it. They didn't say I'm March 12th. Um, y'all, let's book the session. Let's get deep. I, I, I did two today, and the both people just boo-hoo, but they realized I just confirmed what – well, I didn't confirm a lot of it. I connected the dots for them. They didn't realize what was going on. I just connected the dots. Why, from your childhood, you've been doing this? What happened? Yay! My Simply Sad said, all right, March 14th. Your sister, she must be great. All right, y'all, that is my time. Email me at coachkencanyon at gmail. If you want to do a discovery session, y'all, let's figure out what's going on. Thank y'all so much. Let me turn on my theme music, a little bit of my music before we go. Y'all won't be able to hear it on YouTube, Facebook, but I'm out. And um, But... Let me love you.